This next video is on ionization energy, this, uh, another periodic trend. So we've talked about atomic radius, and I told you that atomic radius is the most important trend because all the other trends can be put into terms of, of size of the atom. And so if you haven't watched that video, go back and watch atomic radius. If you feel good about that trend, we can move on to ionization energy. So ionization energy is the idea of um, how much energy it requires for us to remove the um, outermost electron from an atom. And in class, I use the analogy of a football player holding onto a football and we're trying to take the football away, where the football is representative of an electron. Okay, so let's take a look at the overall trend here. And this little graphic shows us um, the trend for ionization energy. So it will increase as you move across a period. So that means as we go across, and you can see that the lines get higher as we go across a period. Um, and again, this is related to atomic radius. If we remember the trend for radius, the size of the atoms gets smaller as we go across. And so if you think about the football player, they want to hold the football close to their body and become smaller. Um, and that way it's going to be harder for you to take the football or the electron away from them, right? So as we go across, when the atoms get smaller, the energy that's required for us to take the electron goes up, okay? So the ionization energy increases as we go across as the atoms get smaller. Because it's smaller, the electron's closer to the nucleus and it's harder for us to take away. So the trend as we go down a family is also the same and related to atomic radius because we know that as we go down for atomic radius, the size of the atoms gets bigger, right? So that means you're holding the football or the electron farther and farther away from you, making it easier for someone to take it away. So as we go down, the ionization energy actually decreases. It becomes easier for us and requires less energy for us to take the electron if it's farther away from the nucleus, okay? Because those atoms are larger and their electrons are farther away from them. So that is why I told you that atomic radius is the most important trend. It is related to these other ones. So we can see as atomic radius decreases, as the size of the atom is very, very small, its ionization energy is going to be very, very large. So that means we said last time that helium, right, was the smallest element. That means it's going to have the highest ionization energy because it's holding its electrons so, so close to its nucleus and it's very small. It's going to make, us, it make it really hard for us to take the electron away. It's going to require a lot of energy for us to take that away. On the other end, we said that francium was the largest element and so since it's so large, it's going to be really easy for us to take its outermost electron away and just pluck it right off because it's so far away from the nucleus. Okay, so again, we can use francium and helium for us to compare ionization energies. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples here for ionization energy. This question from the notes says to circle the element with the largest ionization energy. So if we require lots of energy. I'm going to translate this, and this is something that you could do, and I would recommend you do it because it'll make your problems easier. We can actually translate every question into an atomic radius question. That way you only have to understand atomic radius. You can just switch the question. So when it asks for the largest ionization energy, that's saying um, it's going to require a lot of energy for us to take the electron. So if you think about how you're holding a football, right, if, if you want to make it really hard for someone to take it away, are you holding it close to your body or far away from your body? Probably wanting to hold it close to your body, right, which means that we're looking for um, the smallest radius. Okay, so largest ionization energy means smallest radius. So essentially all we have to do is find the atom with the smallest radius, and then also we can remember that the radius gets smaller this way, up and to the right, and so we remember that helium is the smallest of, of all the elements. And so we can also say, well, it's also gonna be the one that's closest to helium. Okay, so what we can do is compare chlorine, selenium, and bromine on the periodic table. So chlorine, selenium, and bromine, so these three right here. We want the largest ionization energy, um, but really that just means the smallest atom, 
right? And so we know small stuff is over here near helium. So when we compare these three, well, of those three, chlorine is the one that's closest to helium. So it's going to be the smallest, and therefore, since it's so small, it's going to have a large ionization energy because it will be hard for us to remove its electron if it's so small. Okay, so that's how we can do that. Let's do one more. Circle the element with the smallest ionization energy. So now it doesn't require a lot of energy for us to take its electron. Um, so that means that we want a large radius, something that's holding its electrons far away will be a lot easier for us to take. Um, and so if we're relating this to the um, atomic radius trend, a large radius is also the one that's closest to the bottom left corner of the table, which is francium. Right, francium is the element way down here. That's the biggest one. So we're going to compare sodium, potassium, and rubidium. So they're right here. Sodium, potassium, rubidium. So those three right here. And we want the biggest of those three. In other words, the one that's closest to francium. So of those three, we can clearly see that rubidium is the one that's closest to francium. So if it's the largest, it's going to be the easiest for us to remove its electron. So we will choose rubidium of these three. All right. Um, sorry, this video maybe was a little choppy. I had a few interruptions in the middle of that. So um, hopefully ionization energy makes sense. Remember that you can always relate ionization energy back to atomic radius, which we talked about previously, um, and we will always be referring back to this summary chart to make things easy to understand.